Yeah, it's incredibly important. It's something that these archers will have trained all year for. This and the World Championships are our most important thing for these people, and I think it's going to be a really great day. It certainly is. Well, more from Ella very shortly, but let's go down to the shooting line to introduce our bronze medal contenders. So our two athletes have been introduced, both from Spain, both 16 years old. Alexa Olivares goes up against Miriam Sanchez. And uh, Ella, give us a quick prepper on what to expect. How does the scoring work? Let's start with that. Well, these archers will be shooting 15 arrows. Each arrow has the highest value of 10, and they'll be doing a total cumulative score to decide who will win this match. There you go, world number one consummate professional with the mic in her hand as well. Ella Gibson is with us all morning. We get the live action underway with the bronze medal match here for the under 18s, the compound women's tournament. <laughs> so Ella, at the beginning of this match, let's just talk through what's going through the mind of these athletes right now what you know you're you're the world number one you you've competed at this very competition how do you set up how do you get going we've seen a 10 uh, and and now something outside the gold well when you start out on a stage you're really nervous and you're just trying to calm your nerves and make the best shots you can i think today also an important thing to note is the wind and the breeze so these archers are going to be trying to assess their surroundings account for it and make some decisions and then analyze where the arrows go and go from there. Well, consistency, making a little adjustment there. So the grouping's quite tight for Sanchez. Yeah, I think a lot of that movement will probably be from the wind. You can see from some of the feather flags that that's the direction that it's going in. So I think she just didn't account quite as much as her opponent did. Getting ever closer to the centre, but Sanchez dropping four points to her teammate Olivares. Noticed as well, and this is it, here we go, we start with a tricky one straight away, Ella. Sanchez there was looking straight down the lens of the camera. Probably, and possibly, at least, the first time they've had cameras pointed at them. What's that like standing on the field? It's a little bit terrifying, honestly, if you're not used to it, standing there, having people watch you, knowing your parents and your family at home are watching you, can be really quite daunting. It can be hard to forget, but you just have to stay in the zone, focus on you and the target, and know that that's the same as any other day when you train. Yeah, and certainly uh, Olivara is handling it just uh, a little bit better there with a 28 out of a maximum 30. A slightly trickier start for Sanchez. Uh, falling four points behind in the first end of a compound match. Of course, it's doable. You can get back into it, but that is a big gap already. Definitely for compound, four points is a big gap, and it's going to be hard for her to go against and surmount that. But with the breeze out today, anything can happen, you know things change direction or you aren't quite quick enough on the uptake, that can easily be resolved in an end or two. So, Olivares on 28. The scores continue to build from here, but it will be Miriam Sanchez to shoot first in the second end. Well, a miss there from Olivares, and suddenly that four-point gap doesn't look quite so big. Uh, she's grouping really well, just all in the same place. I 
think she probably needs to aim off or account a little bit somewhere. It could be something in her form, but I think it's likely just nerves and a bit of wind. And her opponent needs to try and forget about what just happened. Well, that is another miss from Olivares. It's a 28 in the first end. And so far, no points in the second. I wonder whether something on her kit's gone wrong or whether it's just some breeze and some nerves causing an issue. Well, I've got to say... Great recovery. Yeah, a lovely last shot, of course, but I've got to say, that's um, the first time I think I've ever seen two misses in a single end and uh, very curious after a 28 in the first end. She's looking pretty chilled and pretty relaxed about it, though. Surprisingly very calm. Oh, you can see they're looking at something in her peep. Possibly she couldn't see through it and something may have happened with that. So possibly a little bit of kit trouble there. Now, is that a little bit of, I don't want to say lack of experience, but I'm trying to find a better way of saying it. But these are youngsters. These are under 18s. Uh, is this a big learning opportunity? Let's put it that way. I think it will be a massive learning opportunity. When they are so young, you often find that youth archers don't do a lot of their equipment and don't necessarily know a lot about it and their coaches can be responsible for that for them which a lot of the time can be fine but when you're out in a finals field and up doing alternate shooting if something goes wrong you can't step back and get someone else to fix it for you you've got to be prepared and know how to fix it on the ball which is of course tricky especially when you're nervous and don't necessarily know what happened but something that i think these archers will probably learn from well, interestingly, the Spaniards told us before this match that there were going to be no coaches out uh, behind the athletes in the box. Uh, but someone's rushed out to the aid of uh, Alexis, Alexa Lysis Olivares. She trails now by a whopping 11 points and will shoot first in the third end. Well, a bit of an update here. We've seen that actually uh, Olivares did miss one, but she scored a five with her first arrow. Ella, I'm, I'm going to have to lean on you here. What, what happened there? Uh, I, I didn't actually see the arrow, but I'm going to guess from the shot of the camera that it must have been just above the target face. It must have just clipped it up there, and we just weren't able to see it. The difference now between them is actually, I think, still doable in the last couple ends, depending on yeah, what the weather's like and if they can both hold their nerves or not. Nice. Nice. Looking a little bit more like it from Olivares, the 27. Much nicer recovery and you can see the wind socks blowing behind Sanchez. So she's definitely going to need to count for that. Nicely done. So like you say, the gap is uh, is doable, but I want to switch around for uh, Sanchez in that second end. She now leads by eight points as uh, the Spaniards will remain impartial, of course. Now, someone said something to me this morning, Ella. One of the most beautiful places to shoot here at the Orangery at Lillishaw, the National Sports Centre, as we take a look back on that third end. But the hardest place to shoot, I'm told. Yeah, Lillishaw is as much an amazing facility, one really, really hard facility with a lot of breeze. It's kind of almost a joke in the UK that Lillishaw is windy and has its own little microclimate over here, and the Orangery is no different. It can be great weather or it can be awful weather, depending which direction that wind is coming from. And we have the building on the left-hand side of the arches. That gives a lot of comfort and shelter if the wind is coming from that direction. But if it's coming from the other direction, then it can just hit you, hit the wall and turn around. So you can get a really difficult swirly wind. And that's tricky, especially when you're nervous and under pressure because you don't always trust what you're seeing. You automatically think it's you and sometimes it is and sometimes it is the weather conditions. And you have to be confident enough to make those calls and adjust where you need to so that you can hit the middle. Yeah, very tricky location. A fourth end now, and uh, it's Olivares to shoot first, as you can see, trailing by eight points. Oh. 
Still making all those adjustments, uh, uh, so the conditions aren't stable for sure. Yeah, I think they are a little bit unstable. Personally, if you have inconsistent breeze, I would suggest aiming off or using your bubble rather than constantly moving your sight because you can't do that at full draw. And if you get pushed around and that changes, then what are you going to do when you're up there? <laughs> you know it's not going to hit the middle and you can't move your sight at full draw. Potentially one or two points back there in an end. Still going to be a really difficult last end if she wants to get past the behind that she is. Well, you start, this is interesting, so it's sometimes very difficult to ask this question, but given who you are and uh, where you stand in the world, it's, uh, it's an easy one to ask. When you're this far behind, which I'm sure you never are these days, but if you were to imagine yourself this far behind, are you kind of hoping that there's a miss and, or a gust of wind for your opponent? I think, of course, you are because at the end of the day, you want to win. You know, this is for a bronze medal. This is the difference between getting on that podium, not getting on that podium. And these archers will have prepared all season for this event. You know, it's really important to them. So you want to win. And as much as you may like your opponent and especially your teammate here, you are going to slightly in your back of your head, hoping that something might go wrong that can mean that you might be able to take the win. Obviously, you don't want anything bad to happen to them, but you want to win. We're all competitive people man. here. Yeah, <laughs> You're competitive course. people. Of course, yeah, you want the win. I've got to say, I've, I'm really impressed with the way that Alexa here has handled that second end. She's sort of taken it in her stride, and that uh, shows a great deal of maturity. Tough ask here, though. A seven-point swing now. Corrected there by the world number one. It's a six point swing. She did get upgraded, Olivares. Still yeah. tricky though, right? Uh, definitely tricky, but a 10 is a good way to start. You want to just apply as much pressure as you can to your opponent and yeah. hope they don't do the same, but <laughs> she did. <laughs> So the last arrow here from uh, Alexa Olivares. I know she's just going to be wanting to make it a good one and finish on some yeah. nice arrows. Well, as you can see, a six for the win. And she gets nine. She does indeed. And uh, well, tricky start for Sanchez, but you've got to uh, give it to her. When the opportunity came, she took it. A tricky second end for Alexa Mysis Olivares, missing the target with one of her arrows. But look at uh, the warm congratulations that uh, Olivares gives her teammate Sanchez. Sanchez has taken the bronze at the European Championship. And look, I mean, that is impressive, isn't it? Especially from Olivares.